Hi, this is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to talk about the crash in crude oil and whether it's a good time to buy either crude oil itself or oil stocks. I've been getting a lot of questions about this, so I thought I'd cover it. If you're interested in learning how to trade futures, commodities, uh, or you're worried about this bear market or just want to see how I'm trading it, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So for those of you who've been following the news, you've probably seen that crude oil has fallen quite sharply in 2020. It was uh, trading above 50 late last year, and it's now falling below 20, which I believe is even lower than it fell during the great financial crisis of 2008 and 2009. And what's happening is there's just been uh, a complete lack of demand for crude oil and its products, which makes sense when you have Chinese manufacturing sort of grinding to a halt temporarily because of uh, the coronavirus, and you have demand for crude products such as gasoline uh, falling very, very, um, very far. For example, I have, an, I have an SUV. I live in Colorado. I usually fill it up uh, three times a week. I do a lot of driving, and uh, I haven't actually left my house to go to the gas station, but I'm seeing now that gas is uh, below a dollar a gallon in some parts of the US. And it makes sense because I, I haven't filled up my car in a few weeks now. And so what happens when you have a global recession or global slowdown is the demand for energy drops, uh, both from the manufacturing side and sort of the end consumer side, if you don't need uh, as, much, uh, as much gasoline, if you're, not, if you're not transporting goods or transporting yourself. So people rightly ask, uh, from sort of a contrarian mindset, is now a good time to buy crude oil? Well, the backdrop besides the drop in demand, there's a, a, uh, an oil price war that's going on between Russia and Saudi Arabia. It's fairly complicated. I'm not sure I understand all the ins and outs of it, but it's sort of, sort of a global game of chicken, as uh, the foreignpolicy.com put it. And uh, they're trying to see who can, uh, they're producing a lot of oil, driving down prices, and possibly trying trying to hurt each other or trying to hurt U.S. shale firms. Again, these this sort of geopolitics, I don't have a really strong opinion on. But what I do now know is that you've got this sort of one-two punch of a huge drop in demand for crude oil because of the virus and its recessionary effects. At the same time, you have a huge increase in supply. So what happens in classical economics when you have a lot of supply and very little demand? Prices fall. And so that's what we've been seeing uh, I'll put a link here so you can look up crude oil futures quotes, but you can see today trading around $20 in the front month. And so the question becomes, is it a good time to buy crude oil or crude oil stocks? A lot of you have been asking me about USO, which is a uh, sort of an ETF. It's a fund that allows you to get exposure to crude oil. Now, it looks like it might be a great buy. From a contrarian perspective, the trend has been down, but it's uh, obviously gone down, the USO has gone down a lot from where it's been trading over the years. So the first thing you should always do before you buy an ETF like this is you need to understand what is in it. Wall Street makes these products and a lot of people are fairly naive when they trade them. They don't really know what they're getting and Wall Street uh, doesn't really care because they're collecting, they're collecting fees on this, uh, some expense ratio or something. So if we look up what exactly is in USO, because it's different. It's not just like buying some crude oil in a barrel and sticking it in your backyard and stockpiling it and saving it for a few years. It's a little bit different. What USO contains is it actually contains futures contracts, crude oil futures contracts. So if we scroll down here, we can see uh, expense ratio 0.84%. That's really what you're paying annually, which is uh, pretty steep for something like this. And then if we look at what its holdings are, uh, it has front month crude oil futures that are rebalanced monthly. So let's dig a little bit more into to see what that means. Now, this is the live quotes on crude oil. What I'm going to do is just look at the, the uh, settlement prices, which are sort of the closing prices from, uh, from last Friday. So let's go there. Actually, we'll just do today where we, where we are because the numbers look a little, little bit easier. So you can see crude oil, like many futures, trades in different months. So let me just scroll in a little bit here. So we have the different months for delivery. And so if you're a consumer of crude oil, uh, maybe you're a, a, an oil refinery or something like that, you would buy crude. If you're a producer uh, of crude, uh, you, would, you would sell crude. And what happens is 
you can decide which month to buy or sell. And that is when the actual delivery will happen. Now, you don't have to take delivery of the actual crude oil in, uh, in futures contracts. You can sort of trade in and out of them and use them as a way of hedging. So for example, if you're an oil refiner and you wanna lock in uh, the prices of crude, you know you're gonna be refining some oil into, its, into various petroleum products. Uh, in September of 2020, right now you can lock in a price of around $30 per barrel or $31 per barrel. Now, when we, when we look at these crude oil prices, what we notice is that, uh, well, let's go back. USO basically always has exposure to the front month. And that's a fancy way of saying uh, that it's uh, basically going to be long this front month, which is the one that expires the soonest. And so what, what this does, what this uh, ETF, oil ETF does, is it buys uh, the front month and then as right before the front month expires uh, or uh, a couple weeks before it expires, it will sell the front month and do what's called rolling into the next month. It'll do the May, June roll. So it'll sell May and roll into June and by June. And by doing this, it tries to always have exposure to uh, the front month. Now we would, the even closer month would be since it's March right now, what we would call the spot price or the cash price, whatever crude is trading at for delivery right now. But the front month is a good proxy for this. Now, when you hold futures contracts, you're always going to have, or you're almost always going to have what's called a positive carry, which means you make a little bit of money every day, or a negative carry, which means while you're holding the futures contract, you lose a little bit of money every day. So let's see how this would work with crude oil. And the way to uh, basically... If we, if we look at this contract, we can see we have May, June, July, August, September, and we notice that the prices are moving up 20, 24, 27, 29, 30, 31. So this is what's called contango. And the crude looks something like, the, the, the chart looks something like this. If this is the time axis here, and this is the price of crude oil, it's gonna look something like this. It's, it's upward sloping. Now, whenever you see an upward sloping curve in futures, it means that if you buy the futures, you're gonna have negative carry. And what you're basically doing is you're rolling down the curve. So let's see how that works in particular, especially in the front two months. Let's say we buy uh, two months out. So the June, the crude oil for June 2020 delivery. And just to make the math really easy, we'll say we pay $24 a barrel for this futures contract. Uh, and, and let's say that crude oil stays where it is now uh, when it comes time for this contract to expire. So let's say crude oil stays depressed for a while because we still have this price war between the Saudis and the Russians. And we expect that the economy is not really going to, the global economy and the U.S. economy is not really going to pick up steam. Uh, and the Chinese manufacturing economy is not really going to pick up steam in the in the next couple months because we're still going to be sort of stu suffering under the haze of coronavirus and social distancing and quarantines, etc. So let's say we buy these these this contract at twenty four dollars, and when it matures, it's at twenty. So we're basically buying at twenty twenty four, and selling at twenty. So we're basically losing about four dollars. I'm just rounding these numbers four dollars per contract. And so the way we can figure out a return is negative four divided the price we paid. So roughly, uh, what is this? 16, 17%. And so this, this helps to show why USO has been falling. Because basically when crude oil is in contango, when the prices are upward sloping, you're constantly going to be buying at a high price and selling at a low price. Warren Buffett says you should buy low and sell high. Uh, this is definitely the complete opposite of that. You're basically buying high and selling low. So let's say we think, okay, we, we decide we're not gonna use USO. And this is one reason USO, I should say, has gone off a cliff here, is simply because every month, imagine every month you're losing something like 16% or 10 to 20%. That's why it's the, really the contango in this curve combined with the fact that oil prices have been falling that have caused this thing to just crumble from call it 13 or so before the coronavirus crisis started now down to uh, $4 and something. And what they'll eventually do is do a reverse split and get these numbers high enough. Um, and so maybe this will be trading at 16 or 20 
but the, uh, the negative carry will continue. So let's say we understand this now, and so we say, okay, I'm not gonna buy USO because I'm gonna be paying a fee of 0.84%, and then I'm gonna be losing 10, 15, 20% every couple months. Doesn't sound like a good idea. But I understand that crude oil is trading really as low as it's traded in, call it 20, 25 years. And so I wanna get some exposure. I think crude oil is gonna go up. So I go look at the futures curve, and I say, well, I think it's gonna be much higher in uh, by the end of this year. Let's say we just have a complete economic recovery, et cetera, and uh, everything sort of goes back to normal. The virus doesn't come back in the fall and winter, and manufacturing comes back, and we start driving again, and I start filling up my gas tank three times a week. And so we would expect the price of oil to rise. Uh, it's currently around $20 a barrel. We think it's going to go up a lot from here. Let's say we think it's going to go up 50% from here, which would be an amazing recovery. Well, it turns out if we look at December 2020 crude oil, it's currently trading at uh, $33 a barrel. And so if we think that oil is going to be at 30 by the end of the year, we will actually lose money if we pay $33 for this. Uh, because we'll buy it at 33 and then it will expire or we'll sell it at uh, $30. Now let's say we think that oil is going to go to $33 a barrel by the end of the year. Well, we won't make any money either because it's already priced in. And this is the really important thing to realize when you're dealing with financial markets. You may have your ideas about what's going to happen. You know, is Apple going to beat earnings? Is Tesla going to be able to sell a lot of cars this year? But what you also have to ask is what is priced into the stock? What is priced into the commodity? And in this case, a recovery in crude oil prices for whatever reason is priced in. And so you can actually not make any money unless crude oil goes above 33 by December. So you have to have a pretty strong view that it's going to mean revert back up to 35, 40, 50, something like that, in order to make money with the crude oil futures. So that's something to consider. If uh, crude oil stays around 20, you're going to have an enormous loss if you buy the December 2020 crude oil. Uh, you're going to lose about $13 on a base of $33. Uh, so whatever whatever that is, um, more than definitely more than uh, more than thirty percent, and so this becomes a very uh, a very risky investment. So we've decided we shouldn't buy USO because of the negative carry. Crude oil looks like a recovery is priced in. Maybe the Saudis or the Russians blink and stop producing at such low prices. Maybe the economy recovers very quickly, and we have uh, strong demand again. But either way, we're not really able to play it with USO or crude. Maybe maybe we can play for a trade, we get lucky, we buy the June at 24 and oil moves up a couple bucks, you know, in the coming weeks or bounces around. You might make a little bit of money, uh, but that, that negative carry is gonna be working against you every single day. You're gonna be losing money every single day. And so oil has to really move up in order to pay for that. So then the question becomes, and I've got a lot of people asking me, for example, should I buy ExxonMobil or a company like that? Uh, I've been publishing videos on ExxonMobil since May of 2018. I'll link to this, basically talking about how ExxonMobil is really another General Electric. It's one of those blue chip stocks that a lot of retired people hold for the dividend income, and uh, it's actually very dangerous. So I did this video back when ExxonMobil was 50 or 60. I did another one in uh, December of 2019 saying it's a very dangerous dividend stock. Uh, this was back wherever it was trading. Uh, but it's obviously plummeted quite a bit from uh, since then. If we look at a chart of ExxonMobil, XOM, really gone from, yeah, when I published that video, uh, December 2019, uh, it was trading around 68, high 60s, now down to 37. So complete disaster. It's really followed the price of crude oil as well. Now, if we look at the value line, I'll link to this. If we look at the value line, uh, information on Exxon, Exxon Mobil as a stock, we can see that this is really not your grandfather's Exxon Mobil anymore. Uh, the debt has moved, let's see, where's the first column here, from 2009 to the present, uh, the long-term debt on the balance sheet has moved from about $7 billion uh, in excess of 20, uh, am I doing that right? Yeah, 20, 20 billion. So they've been levering up their balance sheet, taking on more and more debt, They've increased their dividend. Um, 
you can see the dividend has moved from about a buck 66 per share to north of three dollars per share but the company hasn't made any headway you've collected very good dividends but you've lost money as the stock has moved down and there have been years especially uh, 2017 when they had to pay out 94 percent of their earnings of their net profits into uh, as a dividend uh, 2019 according to this production uh, projection this was done um, this is kind of an old report it was done august 2019 but they were projecting that ExxonMobil would have to pay out in order to keep its dividend and not slash it because it's a dividend aristocrat it would have to pay out more than a hundred percent of its earnings now dividends are paid out of earnings you, you can't pay uh, it's like gifting someone more money than you earn the only way to do that is to take on more and more debt and uh, that's what ExxonMobil has been doing the past few years they haven't been able to pay their dividends out of free cash flow so they've had to raise debt in order to keep paying their dividends now if, if crude oil goes back to uh you know much much higher than it's been in a while if it goes back to 100 dollars a barrel exxon mobile probably does fine uh, but that's kind of a macro geopolitical bet that you have to make and it's it's not one that i think is very high probability um, you can see that the return on shareholder equity the equity the roe has moved from sort of the high teens the mid 20s in the early part of the 2010s uh, it's gone off a cliff, 4%, 7%, 10%, 7 or 9%. So this is not really the company that it, it's been. Uh, sales have shrunk by 1.5% over the past 10 years. Uh, and uh, earnings have fallen by 8% over the last 10 years as the dividends have moved up by 8%. So this is not sustainable. And uh, if we go to Yahoo Finance, just type in Yahoo Finance, XOM. And we take a look at where the dividend yield is today. I, I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about dividends and dividend yields. You can see the forward dividend yield, what it's expected to pay out in, in 2020, is about a 9% yield. This is completely, completely fake. Uh, they may pay it out, in which case the company is sort of self-liquidating. And you would expect the stock to go down by at least... 9%. But what this is really pricing in and what I've been telling people, if you see a stock that's got a dividend yield above about 5% in this environment, it's pricing in a dividend cut or it's pricing in a lot of risk to the stock. And so you should not think that this is just a sneaky way to make a 9% when the average savings account is is yielding 1% or or less and the Fed is taking interest rates down to zero. There's no free lunch like that. And so this is continues to be a very risky stock. Now, I can understand the reason in, in uncertain times, uh, in times of, of, of uh, sort of uh, digital value and paper securities, people want, people are attracted to hard assets like real estate, uh, like uh, crude oil, or like gold. Uh, but I don't like crude oil in the same way that I would, I would like some of the precious metals, which which can function as a form of money. The problem with crude oil is when prices go high, producers just produce a lot of it and drive prices back down. And when prices go low, uh, right now it's kind of strange because prices are low and production is still high, but normally when prices are low, uh, a rational economic actor who's not acting for geopolitical reasons like Russia or the Saudis uh, might be, uh, a rational actor will cut back on production. If you're Saudi Arabia and you have a finite supply of oil that's supposed to last you for the next uh, 500 or 1,000 years, it doesn't make sense uh, from a long-term uh, rational actor perspective to be pumping all this oil and selling it at $20 a barrel when the median price is probably, uh, or the average price in coming years is going to be higher. And as we saw from the futures curve, the uh, futures are pricing in higher oil prices ahead. So the problem with crude oil as a hard asset is it has a very low stock to flow. When prices go up, they just pump a lot more and drive prices back down. So it's kind of a classic commodity commodity that's mean reverting. Now gold is more interesting simply because it has a very high stock to flow. So it has a stock to, stock to flow of about 60, I wanna say 62, which means that at current mining rates, gold mining rates, it would take about 62 years to um, to mine as much gold as is currently above ground in inventories. So this is truly a scarce asset. This is a scarce metal, and that's why gold has functioned as a strong store of value over the years. Crude oil is not a store of value. You know, it's great if you're 
a uh, Middle Eastern country and you've got a lot of oil under the ground and you can pump. Uh, of course, it never lasts forever. And um, I think the Saudis have been pretty smart in terms of in some of the other countries in terms of diversifying into U.S. equities. And um, I think the Saudis actually took a position in Tesla as well. Uh, but crude oil is not a good store of value for someone like you or me to just buy and try to preserve our wealth in it simply because it's very volatile and it doesn't really hold purchasing power over time. Or if it does, it doesn't do it as well as some of these other uh, hard assets that have higher stock to flows. Here's a great uh, chart from Plan B on Twitter. I'll link to it. Basically, gold currently has a stock to flow of about 58. Silver stock to flow of 33. In other words, it would take 33 years of mining to produce as much silver as above the ground. Bitcoin currently has a stock to flow of 27. Diamonds are around 19. And then even precious metals or industrial metals like palladium and platinum have very low stock to flows. Uh, palladium has a stock to flow of one, which means basically that if price, if palladium prices rise, it's fairly easy to mine it and you can dump, you can mine in an entire year how much palladium is currently sitting above ground in inventories. And so if something has a low stock to flow, it's not a good store of value. Something has a high stock to flow it has a very good store of value. And that's one reason I'm so interested in Bitcoin. Currently has a stock to flow of 27. Uh, but what's gonna be happening is that stock to flow is gonna be moving up sharply over the coming years. And in just a few years, it's gonna have a stock to flow of 100, which will make it the rarest asset probably in the solar system. And Plan B's model suggests that as a result of this, the entire market cap of Bitcoin will be much higher than that of gold. We've never seen an asset with a stock to flow of 100. This is one reason I'm very bullish on Bitcoin. And so I'd encourage everyone who's, who's really looking for fundamental stores of value and hard assets, not to be tempted by uh, crude oil or even gold. These, these are interesting, uh, interesting relics. Definitely gold is a lot more interesting than crude oil, but the real wealth uh, these days is obviously being made in tech. It's in software companies. It's in tech monopolies like Apple and Amazon. And it's in something like Bitcoin, which has a fixed supply. We know how much there's only going to be 21 million coins ever. Uh, three or four million have been lost or locked up. And so this is going to be a very, very scarce asset. So I want you, if you're tempted by crude oil in these stocks, and maybe, you know, maybe ExxonMobil is a decent investment over the next five or 10 years, but it's not going to be as good as Bitcoin. It's not going to be as good as gold. And it's going to be very volatile along the way. And you're starting to be at the mercy of countries like Saudi Arabia and Russia and the U.S. as well in terms of its own uh, shale production. Now, if you found this helpful, you want to learn more about Bitcoin. You want to learn more about trading futures, crude oil futures, gold futures. You can check out my courses, especially if you have a lot of free time right now. Uh, learn to trade futures like a pro. Uh, what else? Follow my crypto investments where you can actually see inside my uh, crypto and Bitcoin account and what I'm buying and how I'm thinking about it, as well as my flagship courses, which are learn to trade stocks like a pro, learn to trade options like a pro, swing trading with options, and of course, bear market trading strategies. So if you're stuck at home with a lot of free time, it's a great time to uh, pursue your self-education, just become a little bit more knowledgeable about these markets so you don't fall prey to the sort of things that uh, retail investors do where they just say, oh, I'm bullish on crude oil, I'm going to buy a USO, and they don't really understand what's behind it or how the futures work. Once you understand how futures work, there are very interesting trades you can do, even in crude oil and gold. So if this is something that interests you, you can uh, just go to the link in the description notes below. You go right here and click get it now, and it will take you to this page. Now, tuition is normally uh, just $125 for 30 days access no long-term contracts. You can sign up and watch all 12, 13 of my courses over, over the next 30 days while you're, while you're stuck at home and uh, then cancel and uh, you won't be charged again. So just $125, but I know financial times are sort of hard now, so I want to give you guys a coupon code for this. If you go to this page and click coupon code where I just did and you type in YT99 and then click update, that will give you access for just $99 for 30 days. Again, no long-term contracts, and you can cancel uh, You can cancel at any time. If there's a course or a lecture you'd like to see, I can also, uh, you can just email me as your, when you're a subscriber, 
and I'll make you uh, whatever course or whatever lecture uh, that you're interested in if it doesn't already exist on the website. So definitely something to check out. Uh, hit that subscribe and like button if you haven't done so already and you found this video helpful. Let me know your comments and questions in the comment section below. And also let me know what you would like me to make my next YouTube video about. Thanks a lot for listening. Hope you guys are all uh, staying well and staying sane. And I'll see you in the next video.